Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Good morning. I said good morning to ya. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing good. Today is December 31st. We are less than, I don't know, 12 hours or something from the new year. I'm super excited for 2020. You know what I'm saying? All new things planned. Lots of stuff in the works. And I'm super excited to see what you guys are doing in your own lives to make 2020 special, okay? So I've been getting a lot of messages over the past 24 hours about the whole Kevin Hart debacle. Now, before I even get into that, I want to let you guys know, I've been calling out Kevin Hart now for years. I'm not a fan of his. Initially, I was. We talked about this on my live stream last week. Initially, I was a big fan of Kevin Hart. I went to his comedy shows. I supported him. But as I started watching his moves over the years, I just come to realize he's a narcissist and he's very disingenuous, okay? From the way he treated his ex-wife, Tori. That's why I don't feel bad for McRib. She can cry on all the documentaries she wants to cry and try and play victim. Bitch, it's called karma, okay? How you get them is definitely how you'll lose them. When you don't respect somebody else's space, you can't expect the universe to treat you properly, okay? You went after that woman's man. He allowed it, okay? So I don't want to hear any tattoo tears. I told you guys on the live stream I was not going to watch his Netflix documentary. I've seen it pop up on my recommended on Netflix, and I scroll right past it. I'm not supporting anything Kevin Hart does. Now, last, now two weeks ago, I had posted a video on Instagram, and um, basically, Kevin Hart was doing all this mush mouth talking. He's trying to start his own podcast, and I'm going to go ahead and play that for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what I wrote. This was two weeks ago. Go ahead and check this out. First, I need to give you props for simply coming here and acknowledging that you want to change your attitude. Awareness is where it all starts. This tells me that you're guaranteed to succeed because you don't want to tolerate negativity inside yourself. You know that when you start looking at the world through shit-colored lenses, you can't do anything productive. You stop seeing the point of making the effort. You stop appreciating who and what you have in your life. And that's where we're going to begin. We're going to begin with gratitude. We need to reconnect to a sense of gratitude. Gratitude is a kryptonite of negativity. This is the secret to jumpstarting a positive mindset. Negativity simply can't exist where there's gratitude. It just can't. When you start looking around at everything you have to be thankful for, the clouds will part and you can see things with a clear head and a healthy perspective. You'll stop judging the head. All right, so you guys just heard all that mush mouth bullshit. So when I was sent that clip, this is what I posted on Instagram. I said, I can't take this man seriously. Now he's trying to be a motivational podcaster. So yes, Kevin, let's talk about gratitude. I'm sure the two people that you left in your car are extremely grateful and have a high amount of gratitude for the people who actually had character and stopped to rescue them after you, their so-called friend, left them trapped in your vehicle. This dude is a straight up clown. Now I wrote that two weeks ago and of course... The tea sippers with common sense and the ones who understand where I'm coming from when I say certain things, you guys saw it, you guys agreed. Other folks were definitely in their feelings. You're mean, you're negative. Oh, you're always throwing shade at Kevin Hart. Oh, what is it? What do you have against Kevin Hart? What I have against Kevin Hart is his character. Okay, he has no heart, in my personal opinion. When you claim somebody as a friend, you cause an accident and then you and then you leave them to possibly burn in a car while you go try and figure out and concoct a story to save your image. When your image is more important than human life, I have no respect for you at that point. Okay? So now there's a video going viral all over Twitter, all over Instagram, and people are hot right now. Okay? Social media is dragging Kevin Hart. He was trending last night for all the wrong reasons. So what's going down is this. Basically, on his new Netflix documentary, the one that I refuse to watch, 
He's on a private plane with his best friend, okay? Now, this new best friend of his is his personal trainer. His name is Ron Boss Eveline, and he's the CEO of a multi-service fitness company called Just Train. So they met three years ago. Since then, him and Kevin have become inseparable. Ron works out with Kevin. Um, he's his personal trainer. He also runs Kevin's fitness camp. Um, he's been in many of Kevin's YouTube videos and things like that. So they become, you know, best friends over the past three years. So on this Netflix special, Kevin starts disrespecting his so-called BFF. He starts calling him a bitch. He then suggests that the boss is a loser and he owes everything to him, including his survival. What kind of narcissistic abuse is this? I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Me and my guy, Eric, cause you don't take shots. So me and Eric will take shots. I, I don't give a fuck. Shut up, bitch. You gonna lose. I guarantee you that. Buzz, do you think you're rich? I'm not rich. Do you think you're wealthy? Everything stops today. You can live ever. Nigga, I work every day. I said if everything fuck stops, heaven, fuck stop. Heart. If everything stops I'm today, good. fuck, fuck me, fuck up. everything else. I've had money before you and gonna fuck have money me, after you. Fuck everything. If everything stops today, can you survive? Yes. You're a liar. Yes. What the fuck are you talking about? Boss, nigga. Do you have a home? I make more money on trains. Do than you I have, have a home? What the fuck are you talking about? Do you have a home? Tell me. Do you have a home? You are dumb. Just say yes or no. The fact that you're trying to tell me that I can't survive makes Why sure don't boss ever lie? That's fuck. Why don't? Do you have a home? That's dumb as fuck. Do you have a home? I've been making money way before this. Why aren't you answering the question? You sound dumb. Why don't? No, I'm serious. I don't care about that. Fuck you. Fuck you and everything you say. Shut the fuck down, man. You out of line. You can't. 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 You all right, so you guys just saw that clip and basically ends with them getting into a physical altercation. You know, how do you call somebody your best friend a bitch and say that their survival depends on you and act like they were nothing before you? At the end of the day, you didn't make that man. You're not God. You came to him for help. So obviously you saw something in him that you want to hire him and make him your, your personal trainer and BFF. He didn't come to search you out. Celebrities search out people. And that's one thing I hate. That. That's one thing I've always been staunch about even on this YouTube thing. I never wanted anybody to shout me out big. I never wanted a bigger YouTuber to be like, oh, everybody go subscribe to Lovely T. I got this shit from the ground up because can't nobody ever come and say that they made me. Because people love to do that shit. After they put you on, through your bone, then all of a sudden they made you. You'd be nothing without them. And that's what Kevin Hart is doing to this man. How do you disrespect a man who's your friend on a documentary? And even if that happened, if he was not a narcissist, if he really cared about that man, he has the control of editing. That fight would not have made into my documentary if I really cared about that man, his feelings, his business, his, his mental health, his family, everything. If that was really your best friend, you have the power, you're the producer of that documentary, that would have been left on the editing room floor. But it just goes to show you the character of Kevin Hart. And this is why I don't fool with him and I don't support nothing that he does. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of these tweets and these comments and what people were saying on social media. Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw some of those comments. So a lot of people are really upset. They're saying that they're done supporting him. He's trash. This is his true colors. And people have been wanting to know my opinion. Like I've told you guys for months now, hell, for years now, Kevin Hart to me personally is trash, okay? Um, there's not a lot of celebrities that I dislike, but he's definitely one of them because he tries to put on this good guy persona, 
But that persona is steadily crumbling, but his, you know, brain dead fans continue to make excuses for him. Kevin Hart wants to be the Will Smith of the comedy world, okay? He wants people to look at him the way they look at Will Smith. A lot of people admire Will Smith. They look up to Will Smith. They respect him and his family. You know what I'm saying? He's a fun person. When you watch Will Smith on YouTube or wherever you watch him, he just comes off as just genuine. He's just a genuinely nice guy. He's not perfect, but he just, you know, there's something relatable. There's something warm there about Will Smith. Kevin Hart doesn't have that, and that's what Kevin Hart wants. The fact that he's rich, he's on a private plane, but he still needs validation, and with that validation, he needs to knock his own best friend, says everything I need to know. And I remember a few years ago, Master P called him out. I'm blessed that Kevin Hart made a donation. But I feel like he don't have to do that because it's not necessary. I mean, a lot of people are going to do what they want to do is their money. I mean, we made a, a, a synapse, uh, we made a synapse donation, but I mean, it really don't matter what it is as long as you give it from your heart. So I don't, I don't think you have to, to do that with other, with other people. I mean, just let them give from their heart. Whatever you and then after me, Master P, and a few others caught out Kevin for doing the whole Hurricane Hervey challenge, saying that if you're a celebrity and you don't donate at least 25000 you know, like that's not good enough, what ended up happening? Not even a week later, Kevin Hart had to come out and put out a heartfelt apology to his family ahead of the blackmail sex tape that was getting ready to come out. So he basically used the whole Hurricane Harvey situation to deflect from the sex tape coming out. And one of the things that was stated in the article back then is that they're saying that Kevin Hart's real reason for starting the Hurricane Relief Challenge for the Harvey victims was to deflect from the impending sex tape news. So the reason why I want to include that is because I got drugged by so many people for having the audacity to insinuate that Kevin Hart was only doing this whole hurricane relief challenge to, you know, basically divert attention from the fact that he was on the blogs not even a week and a half ago for his cheating scandal. Let me go ahead and play you guys this flashback. Check this out. While I am a fan of Kevin Hart, I do believe that Kevin Hart does a lot of stuff for attention. I feel like there's no need to make a challenge or a spectacle of helping people. Um, and this isn't the first time that he's done that. Um, there was a while back where he gave a homeless person $400 cash. And instead of just giving the homeless person money and knowing in his heart that he helped somebody, he posted on Instagram. Like he kind of put this challenge together once again to make himself look like the good guy. And to also, let's not forget him, his current pregnant wife, and his ex ex-wife were on the blogs just last week for all the drama that went down on Instagram. So I feel like kind of him doing this challenge is another way to divert attention from all the drama that happened last week with him, Tori, and Aniko. And I'm not saying that, you know, he didn't give from a good place. I also feel like everything doesn't necessarily need to be announced, nor do you need to seek validation from other people. All right, so you guys just saw that flashback, and once again, Negro Domus strikes, okay? You know, that's what you call discernment and being able to read and see through bullshit and see a lot of people attack Master P as well and went off on him and claimed he was jealous, but a lot of people can tell when things are being done genuinely and when people are just doing stuff for attention and when they're being full of shit, and that's what I saw with Kevin Hart's whole challenge, and I'm glad that now he's being called out, and even with his little apology PSA to me, it didn't come off as sincere for him to apologize and even confess to this it just comes off as shady because I feel like he's only confessing and apologizing because the person was trying to get a financial gain over him you know so that makes me feel like was this even really sincere and if the woman was okay with everything and she's willing to be hush hush about it Kevin wouldn't have said shit Kevin wouldn't have spoke about it. He wouldn't have apologized. He would have just kept going on like business as usual. So if you guys do not know, Kevin Hart's last ex-best friend, um, JT Jackson, they have now dropped two more charges. Remember, Kevin Hart accused him of blackmailing him and trying to deflect from everything. Now two more charges as of December 13th have been dropped. There's only one more charge left. So, like I said, I look at the whole picture when it comes to Kevin Hart and something about him just and something about him just rubs me wrong. He just does a lot of sneaky stuff and he tries to portray this good guy image and I'm not buying it and I'm not falling for it. So, when I say I'm not a fan of Kevin Hart, 
I don't care about his Hollywood career. I don't care about his movies. I don't care about his comedy. Most people feel like, well, I don't like him because they don't feel like he's funny. I think he's personally, you know, he's funny at times, but I don't care about that. I don't like him because of his character, okay? I've been following this guy for the past few years and I just see the way he moves. His moves are just shady. So I've already explained my issues with Kevin, how I feel like he's disingenuous. So now we're not just going to leave you with that viral clip because it's very easy to paint one picture. That's not what we do here at Lovely Tea TV, okay? We go and we're going to show you the entire picture. I'm not just going to use a viral clip and then bash him and then not show the update, okay? So if you guys don't know, um, after that clip went viral, there's a part two to that situation, okay? And in that part two, Kevin Hart reflects he talks about, you know, the mistakes he's made, and he apologizes to his friends, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys that part two clip. I have to do a lot of still shots in his um in this video because Kevin Hart flags a lot of my shit. He doesn't like the fact that I don't like him, and he's constantly flagging my stuff. So that's why I do a lot of, you know, still shots and anything concerning Kevin Hart. But go ahead and watch this, and I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. I'm a firm believer of practice with you. And I'm always preaching to boss about what we are, what we can be, what we have, why we need to be smart and always looking at the bigger picture. I acted as an ignorant ass who was willing to jeopardize everything you worked for because you got drunk and because you had an argument because it was testosterone in the air. If that situation between he and I had escalated more, when we got off that plane, me and Boss would have been arrested. Luckily, nobody was arrested. You know, the cops just wanted to make sure everybody was okay. But these are the moments where you realize that you're nowhere near where you need to be. So that road to becoming the, the billionaire or the, the mogul, it's a long road, man. It's a long road. It's a long fucking road. And you can think you got it all together and like that. Something stupid can happen that can take it all away. That's what yesterday was. So, I'll read you guys the text that I sent out. Attention, fellas. I'm taking full responsibility for yesterday. I'm wrong. I apologize. That was the corniest and most disrespectful thing that I've ever done or been a part of. I'm going to check myself. I've been on edge ever since blank did what he did I have no right to take my frustration from that incident out on y'all guys I promise you it's my job to lead yesterday I failed in my job I will get my shit together and I will do better love y'all alright so you guys just watched that clip and in my personal opinion do I feel like he's sorry I'm sure he is but I also feel like Kevin Hart likes to play victim and that's my issue with him. Like, of course, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. People are allowed to get angry. People are allowed to get into their feelings. But the thing that bothered me with that situation, it was more than just getting into your feelings. It was more than a war of words. You know, like the old saying goes, a drunk mind speaks a sober truth. And the fact that a few shots of alcohol could lead Kevin to talking to his so-called best friend in such a demeaning manner shows me that's how he really looks at a lot of the people around him. You guys are yes men. He's nervous because he doesn't want to end up in a situation like JT Jackson did him. That's whose name he didn't want to mention. But per what I showed you guys earlier in the video, it's coming out that really JT Jackson didn't do shit. He was basically framed and thrown under the bus. The charges just keep getting dropped. And by the time we hear about JT Jackson again in the new year, they'll probably throw the whole case out. So to me, what he was saying to that man is how he really felt about him. And that was not okay. It's one thing to argue because friends argue. People go back and forth. And I understand that they do have like a jokey, jokey relationship where they call each other bitch and demeaning names, whatever. That's between them. Me and my friends, we don't joke like that, okay? But um, my thing is this. At the end of the day, the words that he said was not okay. The whole mentality of I made you and if I leave today, you'd be nothing without me. 
that was just really very disrespectful. You're basically saying that this man was nothing before you came into his life. You may help elevate his status where people know who he is more. You may have looked out for him. You may have put him in a position. But again, like I said earlier in the video, if you're not doing something from the generosity of your heart, then you shouldn't be doing it because it's not okay to do stuff for people and then come back and say, well, this is what I did for you. I made you, I built you. Well, if that's the case, if you made me, if you built me, if you did all that, build another me, I'm out. You're not going to talk to me any type of way. You know what I'm saying? Integrity is everything. And I do feel like because the cameras were there, it got him gassed up. Okay, that's what a lot of celebrities call the red light special, meaning that once that red light is on, once that camera's recording, you see a whole nother side of a person's personality. And sometimes it gets people hyped up because now I have to be the big, bad alpha male. I got to poke my chest out. I got to show people that, you know, what I'm saying I'm not no punk. I'm not no I'm not just a comedian. I'm that dude. And I'll break you down. And that's the attitude I got from Kevin. While I think it's good that he apologized to his friends. I still feel like he comes off as very disingenuous to me. Like, I just can't take Kevin Hart seriously. You know, the whole, oh, you know, it was the alcohol and the testosterone. No, take ownership for your words. The words that you said was fucked up. You basically try to discredit that man and make you his God. And when somebody makes you their God, at that point, you need to start really trying to reevaluate the situation because no man is God. I don't care if you're Kevin Hart or the damn president period, point blank. So this entire situation is crazy. I want to kind of show you guys a backstory of why I have these feelings towards Kevin Hart, why I'm not a big fan of his, but I also want to be fair. That's one thing I'm going to always be on my channel. I'm going to be fair. I'm not just going to put out a viral clip and then not show you the aftermath if we have that opportunity to share that with you guys. So anyways, y'all, I don't want to make this video too long. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. How do you guys feel about this whole fiasco going on with this documentary? With Kevin Hart. Are you guys here for it? Are you tuned in? Are you not tuned? Are you tuned in? Are you not tuned into it? And then how do you feel about how Kevin Hart talked to his boys? Do you feel like that's really what Kevin Hart meant? That's really how Kevin Hart looks at them? And then how do you feel about his apology? Do you find it sincere? Do you find it convenient and disingenuous? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And last but not least, make sure you hit that notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad. I cannot wait for the new year. We have a few more hours till 2020. So stay tuned. Deuces.